Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs added a remove tool to Photo AI. In today's video, we're going to take a look at that new tool in Topaz Labs, Photo AI. Now, I am going to be using Photo AI as a Lightroom plugin. That's because I often receive a question concerning using Photo AI as a Lightroom plugin, and I want to cover that in this video as well. You can, of course, use Photo AI as a standalone application and as a plugin in Photoshop. Now, specifically, this question I often receive is how do you send the image from Lightroom Classic into Photo AI? There are actually two different ways to do it. The more conventional way is to use the Edit In menu in Lightroom Classic. One way to get to the Edit In menu is simply to right click on the image, then go down to Edit In, and then over and down to Topaz Photo AI. Now, when you use this method, you're going to lose all your raw attributes. So if you're working on a raw file in Lightroom, when you use this method, you're going to send it most often as a TIFF file. You do have the option to send it as a PSD and or a JPEG as well. Uh, but by default, Topaz Labs asks for a TIFF file. So if you do this, any edits you did to your raw file in Lightroom Classic will be baked into the file. So if you're sending it as a TIFF, JPEG, or, or PSD, any edits you did to the raw file are going to get baked in and you won't be able to go back in and re-edit anything. The advantage of doing it this way is I found that Photo AI runs just a bit faster. It seems to be a bit slower with raw files, a bit faster when you use TIFF, PSD, or JPEG. So it's really up to you if you want to sacrifice speed, send the raw file. If you want to uh, do it as quickly as possible, uh, use the TIFF file as is the default here. Now, if you do want to send the raw file, you'll be able to then, after you're done in Photo AI, re-edit your edits on that raw file in Lightroom Classic. For example, this is a Nikon raw file. It was shot with a Nikon D500. You could see ISO was 800. There's a considerable amount of noise, and the Tiger, I wish, was a little bit sharper. Um, I did edits to it. I did some basic edits. And I went to Color Mixer and I added a little bit of saturation and I brightened up the fur a bit of the tiger. So that's really all I've done here. Now, if I want to preserve now my raw format and send it over to Photo AI, to do that, what you need to do is go up to um, File, down to Plugin Extras, and then over and down to Process with Topaz Photo AI. When you do it this way, Lightroom will create a DNG file. Of course, a DNG file is a raw file, and it will send that DNG file here. One thing you'll notice is any edits you did in Lightroom Classic won't show up here. So let me zoom out so we could see the entire photo, and you'll notice that my edits aren't being shown here. When I'm done here, though, and I send the image back into Lightroom Classic, Lightroom will put those edits on that image. So you'll see an edited image, as, image once we're back in Lightroom Classic. And you'll be able to go back in and re-edit things you had already edited. Hope that made sense. Now, when you do send an image into Photo AI, those of you that aren't familiar with it, um, it has a feature called Autopilot. It examines the image and it determines if there's noise. And if there is, it will apply uh, denoise to the image. And it determines if the image needs to be sharpened. And if it does, it will automatically sharpen. Usually, it will automatically sharpen the subject only. Now, in this case, it did determine that there was noise, and you could see that it's turned on, and it did determine that it uh, needed sharpening, and specifically the subject. And if you hover over the word subject, you'll get a red overlay over what Topaz Labs Photo AI thinks is the subject. And you can see it, it found most of the tiger. It missed some of the fur in the top right hand side, but it did a pretty good job. Now, one important thing about using this new remove tool, if I click on it now, uh, what will happen when you first use it, you'll get a warning up here and you can see I'm not getting it now because I've used it already. You should use the remove tool last because after you use it, any of these edits, in this case, the remove noise and the sharpening, are going to get baked in and you won't be able to come back in and re-edit it. So use the remove tool last. Right now, 
I need to make sure that I am happy with the way it removed the noise and I'm happy with the way it sharpened the subject. Now, as far as the noise is concerned, I'm going to zoom in to 200% and we'll drag over here. There was a lot of noise in this background and it cleaned it up nicely. It looks good. Now, as far as the sharpening is concerned, by the way, whenever you move the image around, it has to re-render. So you have to give it a second or two to re-render. I think it's over sharpened. It just looks too crispy to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to sharpening. I'm going to roll this open and I'm going to go to strength. And you can see how it has strength at 83. I'm going to take that down to more like 48. You have to wait for it to re-render. You can see up here it's, when it's re-rendering, it will say preview updated when it's done, I should say. And that actually looks uh, less sharpened. Whether or not it's perfect, I don't know. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to zoom to like 100% so I could see more. have to wait again for it to re-render, wait for it to say preview updated over here. And it looks okay, but I'm just going to try to tweak it up just a little more. And there it's done. Now it looks to be over sharpened. So I kind of have to kind of split the difference as I'm bouncing around between these different amounts of strength. I also could try a different AI model by default or what it determined it needed is standard model. I could use strong lens blur or motion blur. I stay with this standard model for now. And that actually looks decent. And I could then zoom all the way out. Uh, just to make sure that it is decent, I have to wait for it to generate the preview, and it did. That looks pretty good. All right, now I'm ready finally to reuse the remove tool. And remember, use it last because anything I did here, I won't be able to come back in and re edit these. So I'm going to use this remove tool, and when we click on it, you'll get this remove panel. And you can see you have two different types of brushes an add brush and a subtract brush. Uh, obviously, you're going to start with the add brush and you're going to brush on things you want to remove. Uh, specifically, I want to remove this kind of piece of stick or weed that's cropping up. There's another one here, a tiny one here, and another tiny one over here. So I want to remove all four of those. Um, if you, when you paint, if you make a mistake, you could use then the subtract brush to uh, remove your brush stroke from where you made your mistake. Now, in this case here, I'm going to stay with the Add tool. You have a brush size slider. And you also could adjust the brush size with the bracket keys. The right bracket key will make it larger and the left bracket key smaller. So I want to come in and I want to get a brush that's just big enough to encompass this stick or whatever that is that's jutting up there. Um, you can see there's other, there's mass controls. If you make a mistake, you could just restore it. You could clear it. You could start over. Uh, you could, padding is really the feathering. And um, I found that normal usually works fine. Uh, I've never got good results using none. And max, I've got good results, but I found normal to work fine. And guidance is your erase area. So this is basically where I'm erasing is where you'll see this overlay come through. I'm going to come through here and get rid of this uh, piece of grass. Now, you could let go of the mouse and like reposition your mouse like I am because you have to click remove down here for it to actually do anything. So you could come in and do this in pieces so you could get it as accurate as possible. Down here. Now we'll do this little piece of stick here. This one over here. Now this one over here. All right, so I have all four of them drawn. Now I have the option, do I want to do this quickly or do I want a higher quality? And you can see if you hover there, it gives you a tool tip. It says controls the amount of processing time the model will spend generating a new background. Higher quality takes more time, of course. The amount of time depends on your hardware. So it really is hardware dependent. Uh, it uses your graphics card heavily from what I've read. So if you have a high-end graphics card uh, that is most compatible with Topaz Photo AI, uh, then it's going to go very quickly. On the other hand, if you have a lower-end graphics card and or a graphics card that isn't as compatible with Photo AI, it may take a while. Now I did uh, do this. Um, you know, before I did this video just to see how it worked. And I used it with the default speed of right here. 
And what I found is it removed it perfectly, but right here on the tiger's like temple, it was just look, the fur looked funny. So I want to try it with quality all the way up. Now, when I did it at the default position, it took about 45 seconds to remove these sticks. With quality all the way up, I'm sure it's going to take a lot longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the remove button now. And then what I'll, I'll do is I'll uh, pause the video while it's doing this. And then we'll come back when it's done and we'll look at the result. Okay, we're back, and it still messed up the fur up here on the side of the uh, tiger's head. Now, I read their uh, help forums and stuff like that, and it said if this happens, to just brush over it and do it again. And I did that last time, and what it did was it gave a third eye over here. So, uh, bottom line is, I don't think this is really ready for prime time. I'm going to try it again, though. So we'll come in here. We'll try to brush like right in here like that and try to make it look better, I guess, for lack of a better way. And we'll click remove and we'll see since this is a smaller area, let's just see what it looks like and let it do its thing. I might have to pause the video again if it takes a long time. I will mention that if you are a Lightroom user, I have a total course on Lightroom, like over 60 videos, hours and hours of training. I'll have links to that in the description below this video. If you are a Lightroom user, I have a um, keyboard shortcut PDF that you can download for free. I'll have a link to that in the description below this video as well. I'm thinking about doing uh, training for Topaz Labs products. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. And okay, it might look a little better, but I Definitely don't think it looks natural, particularly when you look over here. Uh, but let's just say that we like that and let's close and apply. All right. And you'll notice now that we cannot come back in and readjust anything here. You can see it's locked. So you have to make sure that you use this remove tool uh, after you're done uh, doing everything else. And we'll come back here and we'll click save. We're going to save it back to Lightroom. And then what will happen is, now remember this wasn't edited. When it comes back into Lightroom, it'll apply our edits to it. Now I'm going to hit the I key on my keyboard a couple times to change uh, what's up here in the top left-hand corner. There, this is the DNG file. You can see this has the weird look right here. It removed the, um, the uh, twigs that were sticking up in front of the tiger. It also looks a bit over sharpened right in here. I wasn't careful when I did that. Here's the original raw file uh, that did some editing to it. So uh, my recommendation is that you only use that remove tool in Photo AI for some very small things. If you have something that uh, you want to remove that's in front of something critical like a tiger's face, it doesn't seem to do a good job. Now let's compare it very quickly to Lightroom's new um, remove tool. This one's here, the uh, content aware erase tool. And let's see how this does. So I'm going to get a larger brush by using the right bracket key. There's no uh, feathering or anything here. And this one here, as I draw, it will start to remove after I let go. So we'll do that. Let it, we'll do a piece, I say, at a time. And actually, that looks okay, I guess. Let's come in. And it, you can see this is faster, too, technically. I mean, I am going doing it in pieces, which is taking a little longer. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Go up this way, down this way. Let's try to do it in one false swoop. All right, see if we what that looks like. That renders. And that looks actually pretty good. I think so. Go over here, take that one out of there, take this one out of here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, it kind of looks a little funkier like right in here. Now, if it is, you see how I can't paint on it when I come in there? 
what you do is go down to the toolbar. That's this little uh, strip of real estate that's directly below the image. If you don't see the toolbar, hit the T key. The T key will toggle that toolbar off and on and go over to tool overlay and put it on never. And then you could come in and maybe just try to paint this up a little bit and see what happens there. That looks a little better. So uh, bottom line is, I believe, the um, Lightroom's Content Aware Remove works better than Topaz Labs Remove Brush that is in Photo AI. Now, of course, the Remove Brush is technically still in beta. It's not actually fully, I guess, rendered or finished yet for whatever reason. And uh, to or, um, Lightroom's Content Aware Remove Brush has been out for a while. Um, so it, you would expect it to work better is what I'm trying to say. And it definitely does. Now, um, as far as the noise is concerned, if you are a Lightroom user, you probably don't need photo AI because you could come in and go to the detail tab and use denoise. In most instances, denoise only works on raw files and only works on raw files that were taken with cameras that have either a Bayer sensor or an X-Trans sensor. X-Trans sensors are in Fuji cameras. And Bayer sensors are really a Bayer style sensor. It's not really a brand. It's the way the uh, pixels are laid out. Um, they're in pretty much most common cameras. You know, um, Sony, Nikon, um, Canon, all use Bayer style sensors. So you should be able to use Denoise on a RAW file. And let's just do it. We'll click Denoise and let's just compare um, it to what we got from uh, Photo AI. I'm going to move this over here. What I could do is click on this little ma minus magnifier and zoom out and then click like right there. Yeah, that looks good. I'll just leave it right where I had it on that. 68. We'll click enhance. Now this will create another DNG file and all those edits we just did will get applied to this new DNG file. We'll see how those uh, content aware brush uh, removal, content aware move tool, I should say. We'll see how that looks on this new DNG file. You may want to do that last as well, meaning remove noise, then use that brush later. We'll see. All right, this is it here, and it still looks pretty good. So it removed the noise. This is the Lightroom version, by the way. Let's go up here to View, Lock Zoom Position. So when I click between images, it doesn't jump around. This is the DNG file from Photo AI. You can see that the noise is a little bit there, but I wasn't really, I wasn't really careful there. I really didn't go in and try to make the noise uh, removal. Like I didn't optimize it. It's what I'm trying to say. And there's the original raw file. You can see there's a considerable amount of noise there. So in this uh, quick test where I really didn't give Photo AI a fair shake, uh, as far as noise removal is concerned, you can see that Lightroom just is better, did better with the removal of the of the sticks and it did better with the noise reduction. Of course, it really didn't do any sharpening, but I could do that in masking. Uh, I could mask the subject, see what it does. And it didn't catch the whole tiger, but that's all right. I really don't want to sharpen over here. I just want to sharpen the tiger's face. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to subtract and get a brush and I'm going to remove the mask from down here and just sharpen the tiger's face and then I'll go maybe add a little bit of texture and then go to detail and add some sharpness. You could like go crazy with the sharpness, but just a little bit as far as that is concerned. So you could do that there. So hopefully that helps you with something, <laughs> you know, it helps you either uh, know when to use the new um, erase tool that's found in photo AI when to use things in Lightroom and in what order to use things in either app. Hopefully that helps. Let me know in the comments if this was a waste of time or not, but hopefully it helped. Thanks everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.